As an engineer, people often ask me what my favourite type of machine is. And being a bit of a Monty Python fan, there's only one real answer. A machine that goes... Hello and welcome to an extremely boring episode of Bloke on the Range. Today we're going to be talking about what everybody already knows about the M1 Garand, or Garand, or Grand, or however you want to say it. Now everyone knows that when the clip ejects on the last round of the M1, it goes bing, which alerts everybody in the vicinity to the fact that you're out of ammo. Really? And what about him there? And him there? And the machine gun back there? Okay, 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 let's uh, pretend for the minute that you are on your own, you just fired eight rounds towards the other team, and then you get a ping. And then everybody knows that the guy can then rush you and stick you with a bayonet or something. So, uh, let's just have a look. Split time, 3.90. How far is the guy going to cover in 390? And that wasn't even that quick. Now everybody knows that a major problem with the M1 is that uh, you can't top it off. I mean, uh, if you partly fired your clip... Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's just such a terrible problem that uh, in the heat of battle, if you fired a partial clip, you... Uh, you can't top it off. Wait. Did I just... Did I just top it off? Without taking the clip out? But everyone knew you couldn't... Now everyone knows that a 10 round detachable magazine like you get in a G43 or a SVT40 um, is far, far, far better than... Uh, than an eight round on block clip because you can top it off which apparently what I just did there I couldn't have done you couldn't have seen me do that anyway I unfortunately don't have a G43 or a Tokarev so uh, Franklin Rifle is going to stand in for us now if you were lucky and you were issued with one of those uh, other semi-auto rifles you'd get the rifle and three magazines if you're unlucky you only got one magazine and then you're on stripper clips now First of all, when you get to the end of a magazine, Franken Rifle, we'll just pretend it's back, what have you got to do? Magazine off, you've only got three of these, so you stow it, you can't chuck it on the floor. It has to go in a pouch, open another pouch, put another one on, pull back the cocking handle, let it go. As for topping off, not all of the G43s had a hold open catch, the Tokarevs didn't. So to top off, you'd have to take the magazine off, fill it with loose rounds, put it back in. Is that really quicker than what I just did? I don't think so. And in any case, once your uh, three magazines are exhausted, you're loading two stripper clips into the top. So I haven't got any to show you, unfortunately, but you take the stripper clip, you clip out, clip out, pull back the cocking handle, let go. So when you're out of ammo on an M1, it locks back. All you do is whack that in the ready great hole, knock it forward and you're ready to go. There's no worrying about retention, you don't have to go back to a patch, you don't even have to close the patch. The idea that somehow for two extra rounds you put it in there, if you can reload in under four seconds quite easily, all your ammunition comes ready packaged like this. But everyone knew, everyone knows. Now realistically all this talk about topping off with individual rounds in uh, in the heat of combat or even in a lull in combat, it's a bit unrealistic. So let's say uh, we fired out six of our eight rounds. You've got two options really. You can throw the last two down range or you can quickly whip that out, whip a new one in, eight rounds ready to go. Now I kind of demonstrated this when 
I uh, demonstrated topping off, but uh, something else everybody knows about the M1 is you can't load less than eight rounds. Well, uh, what I'm about to do may shock you. You'll never believe what this Englishman did with an M1. Right, how to do it. We put an empty clip in, and then we start feeding in rounds, pushing them to the back as if it was any other magazine. So I'm going to put five in here. You want to keep it pushed against the spring because otherwise they, uh, they just separate and go everywhere. Now we've got five in there, you see? Now, with the back of my hand against the, the charging handle, I push it down. Now you see, it doesn't release automatically because it only releases on a full clip. So while I'm pushing it down, I push back on the charging handle and it clicks. And then, once you've got used to it, you can get the clip to lock in and then peek. Let me show that again, because there is a bit of a knack to this. So we've got five in, hand against the charging handle, push them down, bolt releases, clips locked in, starts to take around, let it go. Job, job. Now in case anyone was wondering, you can actually get uh, modified clips that hold five or two, and this one's double-sided and takes five in one side or two in the other and these are for either competition shooting or for hunting. Quite handy. If you only want a single round you don't need a clip at all. You can just chuck it in and drop the bolt. Which you do by putting your hand against the back, pushing the floor plate down and letting it go. Making sure your hand whips right out the way. Now you may have noticed that these rounds look a little bit short for 3006 because they're not 3006. This is in fact a 308 uh, M1. This is one made by Beretta for the Danish Army. Now the Danish Army had both 3006 and 308 M1s in service at the same time. Uh, the ammunition was called 762 millimeter in both cases, just with a different M number afterwards. Uh, and so there was actually quite a high risk at this time of mixing up ammunition. As a result of this, there's a block. Whee. There's a block here. Now a lot of people know that this is for feeding the shorter round. Actually, it isn't. You'll notice that there's no trace of, uh, of brass on it, or bullet material. It's not touched. Actually, what this serves to do is to prevent you from whacking a clip of 3006 in there. Because 308 is 3006 shortened by half an inch, generally speaking. The problem here is that you could, without that block, potentially whack a clip of 3006 in. At which point, the bolt slams shut half an inch early, so it's open, half an inch of uh, unsupported case head. Now, the firing pin on an M1, um, it's, uh, it's not got a spring, it's free floating. So, uh, if you were the unlucky chappy who uh, whacked the wrong 7.62mm ammunition in there and it went off, you've got a breech explosion. And that's not nice. In fact, here you can see just quite how hard that floating firing pin hits the primer of a round being chambered normally. And you can just imagine the problems that would give if the bolt was uh, stopped half an inch short and not closed. Now I'm not going to do an explanation on the rifle or its history because there's hundreds of channels with hundreds of videos uh, dealing with this and I can't really add anything. Now there's a few things about the M1 that everyone knows which are in fact true. Firstly is M1 thumb. Now how M1 thumb happens is when the clip is pushed in the bolt releases automatically. Sometimes it needs a little knock like here but it goes on its own. So if you're not careful and you push it down like this, there's a risk when it releases that it takes your thumb with and catches it there. Same with if you're doing it with the wrong side. Now the cocking handle is right at the back of the op rod and the whole point of this is that you put the back of your hand against it like that so that when it goes you've got the back of your hand against it and if it goes all the way it knocks your hand out the way and you feel it so your hand, trust me, Practically everybody gets their thumb trapped in one of these once. 
You know about it. You don't do it again. Now, I'm sorry M1 fanboys, there are some genuine problems with this rifle. It is complicated to take apart. The bedding has a complicated clamp arrangement. This one's nice and tight. I do not take it out of the wood. Uh, the safety catch, great idea. It's a, it's a little floppy switch here, but what's that? My finger's in the trigger guard. You'll see a lot of combat footage, Second World War, Korea, of people walking around with their finger in the trigger guard because they want to be able to push the uh, safety catch off and fire around as quickly as possible. That's not great ergonomics. Okay, so let's just do one more, one reload one, just for good measure. Single round. Five sixteen. We're looking at five seconds for a fumbly reload. That ain't bad. I think the take-home message from uh, all of this is that uh, someone in the Second World War armed with one of these, with bucket loads of prepackaged ammunition that uh, he could just stuff in the gun. Doesn't have to put it in magazines. They're not stripper clips. Um, he's really at no disadvantage. In fact, this sustained fire. I think you're going to keep up a far, far higher uh, rate of fire with an M1 than you are with uh, any of the other semi-autos going. Because with the other semi-autos, by the time you've stowed your one empty round, empty magazine, uh, the guy with the M1's got more rounds in his, and he's probably up to 11, 12, 13 rounds. So uh, I think overall the speed advantage goes to, the, goes to this one. So, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you can join me again sometime. Maybe, if you're lucky, maybe even my darling wife will be along. And this is how we call the kids to dinner in the bloke household. Kids, dinner!